Hey, what's up guys? This week we're making some easy one pot pastas. Easy enough for a weeknight, but uh, uh, I did the food backwards. This is getting out of hand. It's a good thing that this week's sponsor is Bouncy Paper Towels, who are here to bring you quick and easy recipes, quicker picker upper style. These one pot pasta dishes are a quick and easy way to get dinner on the table, and with Bouncy, you'll have the kitchen cleaned up quickly too. Let's get down to basics. All right, so first up, we're making skillet lasagna. I thought that'd be cooler. But yes, you heard me right, skillet lasagna. Oh, geez. In this recipe inspired by America's Test Kitchen. First thing we gotta do is break our lasagna into manageable bite-sized pieces. We're using 10 sheets of lasagna here, because since this is a one-pot pasta, we're gonna be cooking it in the cooking liquid, which in this case is pretty much a run-of-the-mill Italian red sauce. We're starting by heating about a tablespoon of olive oil over medium-high heat until shimmering and adding a pound of decased, mild or spicy Italian sausage, for which we're gonna follow standard browning and crumbling protocols, just saute and mash up until every piece has some nice color and the centers are just slightly pink. Then we're gonna remove the sausage from the situation and allow it to drain on a few layers of bouncy paper towels. And then we're gonna make good use of all that fat and brown stuff in the bottom of the pot by sauteing half a large chopped onion for about three to five minutes until softened and the edges are beginning to turn translucent. Then we're gonna crush two cloves of garlic in there, add an optional teaspoon of red pepper flake and toast those guys together for about 30 seconds until fragrant. And then here comes the liquid in the form of a 28 ounce can of crushed San Marzano tomatoes. Add the sausage crumbles back to the party, along with a half cup of hot water, bring to a simmer, and add our 10 sheets of broken lasagna noodles. Just kind of fold those in there so every noodle gets coated, and then we're going to top that with an additional 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. Mix everybody together until relatively well mixed, bring back up to a simmer, and cover, reducing the heat to medium low. And then we're going to slowly, gently cook this whole pasta mess together for about 20 minutes until the noodles are fully cooked, stirring every five minutes or so to make sure that the noodles aren't sticking to the pan or to each other. Once the noodles are cooked to your preferred degree of doneness, we're going to execute some finishing moves on this quick but sloppy weeknight lasagna. First, a generous two to three ounces of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, and to maximize stretch factor, we're going to add eight ounces of full-fat, low-moisture cubed mozzarella. Give this a mix to make sure that everybody is distributed throughout the pasta. Did those pronunciations upset you? They sure upset me. Once everybody's nice and spread out, we're going to hit this skillet lasagna with a final cheese death blow, dotting its surface with mounds of ricotta. Remove from the heat, plop the lid on top, and let the residual heat of the pasta warm and awaken all the cheese. Lastly, we're going to garnish with some finely chopped or julienned basil. Now, this lasagna is not going to make Italians happy or win you any new followers on Instagram. What it is going to do is get you an absolutely delicious lasagna on the table in less than 45 minutes. No layering, parboiling, or fussing required. So that ticks our red sauce cheesy indulgence box, what if we want something a little lighter, a little healthier, that's still pasta? Well, for that, we're going to start with this funny looking thing, the likes of which you've probably seen in your local grocery and thought to yourself, I'll try making that one day. Well, that day is finally here. We're going to start by chopping the stems off of our whole bulb of fresh fennel, cut the bulb in half, and then we need to remove its tough, fibrous core. We're going to do that by placing two triangular cuts at the base of the bulb, removing the core, and then slicing into thin slices. Be sure to slice it nice and thin because this guy is going to cook primarily from braising. And the last thing you're going to want in your pasta is bits of tough fennel. Once that guy's all sliced up, the next thing we need to prepare is an herb and spice paste. We're going to start by removing and finely chopping the leaves from two sprigs of rosemary, placing those in a small bowl with two or three cloves of crushed garlic, the zested zest of one lemon, and a sprinkle of crushed red pepper flake. Top that with two tablespoons of olive oil and mix to combine into what might be the most delicious substance known to man. Set that aside while we talk protein. In this case, we're going with four bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. First, we're going to rinse and pat them dry before seasoning. Hit them with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper and head on over to the stovetop, where in a cold stainless steel pan, we are dumping about a tablespoon of vegetable oil, nestling our thighs inside and making sure that they are thoroughly coated in the oil. Cranking the heat up to medium-high, seasoning the other side of the chicken with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, and letting these guys sit undisturbed for about three to six minutes. Starting the chicken 
in a cold pan is going to let the fat more effectively render out of the skin and help them crisp up or ooh, ooh, that guy went a little bit too far. That will be the chef's thigh, but you can see the rest have crisped beautifully and evenly. Let them cook for about one minute on the bottom side, and then we're going to drain off about half of the fat in the pan using what remains like last time to saute our aromatics, half a large chopped onion and our sliced fennel. Saute these over medium heat for about three to four minutes until they're starting to soften and lightly brown. Then we're going to make a sort of well in the center into which we're going to deposit our herb and spice paste, sauteing on the direct heat of the pan for about one minute before mixing into the surrounding vegetables. This should fill your kitchen with smells hitherto unknown in terms of olfactory pleasure. What? Anyway, saute these guys together for one to two minutes before deglazing the pan with one cup of dry white wine, two cups of chicken stock, and the juice of our previously zested lemon. Scrape up all that delicious fond off the bottom of the pot and bring this guy to a bare simmer, at which point we're going to return our chicken thighs to the party skin side up, making sure that the skin is not submerged below the liquid. Then we are sending this pan into a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. Yes, I know I'm grimacing an awful lot, I'm kind of an oven heat dry drama queen. Let those chicken thighs braise until the liquid has reduced by about a third, and the thighs are cooked through and tender with still crisp skin. Now set those thighs aside, and return our braising liquid to medium-high heat, to which, once simmering, we're going to add 8 ounces of whole wheat pasta. Lower the heat once it returns to a simmer, keep mixing every few minutes or so, and cook until the pasta is done. This is going to accomplish a couple things. It's going to absorb most of the braising liquid, and what remains is going to be thick and creamy from all the starches released from the pasta. But to make Make things even creamier, we're going to add two or three ounces of grated Romano cheese, which is obviously going to add a lot of flavor, but also a little more body to our sauce. We're also going to add a handful of chopped basil, which is going to play real nice with all the sharp and funky flavors we got going on here. Return our chicken thighs to the pot to heat through if they've cooled off at all, and garnish with a little bit of parsley. And there you have it, a relatively quick, relatively healthy, but extraordinarily tasty weeknight pasta. If you're trying to keep it light but are craving some carbs, this is the way to go. And we'll go down in the books as my my favorite way to pretend that I'm being healthy. But it's more for flavor than function. The sort of nuttiness of whole wheat pasta serves as an excellent backdrop for the tang of the sauce and the richness of the chicken thighs. But it's got no cream or tons of cheese, so it's kind of healthy. You can see that I'm in conflict here. How about we lose the ambiguity and head back to indulgence with some beef stroganoff? Most recipes call for lean cuts like sirloin that are cooked directly in the sauce, but this results in pretty dry, chewy beef. Instead, I like to just make stroganoff pasta and top it with straight up steak. You can use whatever steak you like, I'm going with skirt steak, which I'm going to generously salt and pepper, setting it aside to rest at room temperature for a few minutes while I prep my mushrooms. Eight ounces of cremini mushrooms that I have rinsed and am now going to pat dry using some bounty paper towels. A lot of folks say not to wash your mushrooms because you'll waterlog them, but here's two facts. First, mushrooms are dirty. Second, mushrooms are already full of water that needs to be released throughout the cooking process. So just be sure to wash them whole so they don't absorb as much moisture and dry them quickly before chopping into bite-sized pieces. Next, over on the stovetop, in some smoking hot vegetable oil, we are searing our steak. The method's obviously going to vary depending on what kind of steak you choose, but for this skirt steak, I'm searing about two minutes per side and rarer than where I want it to end up, because now it's going to hang out under aluminum foil for a while while we finished making our stroganoff. Then we're going to reheat the beef in the pasta, which is going to help finish it cooking. Into our beautifully messy pot goes a tablespoon or two of butter, which, once melted and foamy, is going to be the thing into which we dump our mushrooms. Mushrooms. That sentence fell apart, and we're going to season our mushrooms right at the beginning of cooking with a little bit of salt. This is going to help draw out all that moisture we were talking about, which has to be released from the mushrooms and fully evaporated before we can get any browning. Once we start seeing some nice crispy brown stuff on the outside of the mushrooms, we're going to lower the heat a little bit and, once again, add half a large chopped onion. Saute these together for two to three minutes until the onions are softened and the mushrooms are nicely browned, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of paprika, along with maybe a heaping tablespoon of freshly picked thyme leaves. Saute these together over medium heat for about 30 seconds until the paprika is toasted and the thyme leaves are nice and fragrant. Then we are deglazing the pan with one cup of dry white wine and two cups of chicken stock. Bring this guy up to a rolling simmer and then it's the same deal as before. We're going to cook our pasta in the liquid. Eight ounces of the small shaped pasta of your choosing. This is both going to make the pasta super flavorful and help thicken the sauce. But we're not quite done yet. Once the simmering liquid comes back up to a simmer, we're going to optionally grab a half a cup of 
of it and slowly stream it into a cup of sour cream. This is gonna temper the sour cream and help prevent it from breaking when we add it to the sauce. You can skip this step, but if you do, just make sure you add the sour cream to the sauce off the heat. Back over on the stovetop, our pasta is both absorbing and thickening the surrounding liquid, and by the time it's done, about 90% of it should be absorbed. Now we're gonna finish the sauce with a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, as well as our tempered sour cream mixture. Mix all that together over very, very low heat until the sauce is nice and creamy and everything is evenly incorporated. Finish with a little chopped parsley and season with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper to taste, and then it's time to reintroduce our steak to the party. Unwrap and slice as desired. If you made skirt steak, that means cutting it with the grain into two to three inch segments and then slicing across the grain into thin, tender, flavorful pieces, which we're gonna plop on top of our piping hot pasta, cover, and let rest for about five to 10 minutes until the beef is heated through and then you're ready to serve. Ouch. As usual, the more ingenious parts of this recipe come from J. Kenji Lopez Alt, but it has been adapted to be a single pot recipe. And this, while being a relatively easy weeknight dish, is not the beef stroganoff out of the box. It's full of tender, perfectly cooked beef, a creamy, complex sauce coming together to make something easy enough to make after work, but elegant enough to woo even the coldest of hearts. And it's all thanks to the Quicker Picker Upper for sponsoring another episode of Quick and Easy Recipes. I'm proud to partner with Bounty, who, to together with Feeding America, is helping to provide 10 million meals to people in need. Head to the link in the description for more info.